Okay, so we've got the air pump all reassembled again. Just sitting there as an assembly, ready to go back onto the truck. Just once again, the top part fits on this part here in the center, the other black part. This screw holds it in. There's no clicking or setting or anything that, that, that you know that it clicks as it shut. It just fits on and you tighten it down. When you put the screws through here, this comes onto this plate, through this plate, where this rubber part is mounted inside, as far as uh, like a gasket. Then everything is drawn together by these four screws. Just make sure they're all together, make sure they're torqued down, just don't break it. The only thing that I did do differently was, since this is old pop metal in here, was I went ahead and put some um, anti, um, anti seize compound on it. Used to call it never seize, but somebody else has got the same thing, but it's called something else. Anyway, hardware store, whatever. Anytime I put things back metal to metal like this, I normally go ahead and use that stuff. 50 years from now, you can come back and those things will just fall out in your hand almost. So, anyway, that's me. Now that we've got uh, the pump put back together, it's still sitting out on the bench, we're going to go ahead and take care of, I guess, it's uh, a valve, and a check valve inside of there. I really don't know. I have no idea about these things. This is my first time looking at it. Anyway, we're going to take off this air cover just so it's more convenient. Okay, I've already got it disconnected. Done the little switches here and here to pop this off. Get it up and get it out of the way. There was also this little electrical clip on the side here that we're going to take off. There's also the other part of the tube that goes down to the pump, air pump, that we're going to take off and get this out of our way. There's also a little rubber vacuum line here. Exactly what does what, I don't know. And it looks like, okay, it comes into there and the tube comes off the butt and goes in somehow to the exhaust area up underneath here. I can't really see, but it looks like there's, like this butts up against the uh, the block. So that's what we're going to do. Now, whether I'm going to take this apart or if I'm going to take it off here and back here so they don't have to remove this, we'll find out. So, let's hope it all comes apart and back together again. And that's what it looks like from the side. And this is kind of what it looks like from the front of the truck. Right there. So anyway, wish me luck. Okay, I've got the solenoid check valve or whatever it's really called out. And uh, the part used to fit up against here. And of course it went into the engine. And the solenoid bolted into the engine block. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but if you see this screw right here, this was what was in the block to hold in the solenoid piece or whatever so I'm going to show you why that is important and that is because <clears throat> this is an insert stud I believe is what they call it whatever this part here screws into the engine and then this piece is secured with a screw or a nut that's castellated self-locking nut Okay, so in order to get this piece out without taking everything apart, otherwise I have to take off the uh, heat shield and all that kind of stuff, I remove this piece, or loosen this piece with the uh, nuts, castellated nuts, these guys here, and then with a number six metric, six metric is what fits this. Okay, so once you get this loose, then you got to pull these out by removing this from the block. And then this, by kind of wiggling it around and all this other kind of stuff, you can get it out. Otherwise, in order to take off the tube that goes from here to the block, the nuts are in the, um, I'd have to take off the, uh, the heat shield. And I really didn't want to do that. So this is no big deal of a job. Uh, let's see where that piece goes. This piece will probably fall out, and it just is like a seal that goes in between. Okay, so anyway, I wanted to kind of show you that before I even started on this. It's starting to get a little bit dark, so um, we're going to uh, 
uh, call it quits here in a bit for this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these screws apart. You see down here three of them, I believe. Yes, it's kind of dirty. That and then uh, you know clean things up. Kind of clean that up a little bit so it'll make a nice seal. And I'm going to take this apart and, and hopefully see that uh, you know what might be in there. Well, I'm not exactly sure what I've been recording here or what I recorded the last time exactly. I left the thing running anyway. All right, uh, back to this little insert. This is kind of the way it's going to be. This part here, the end goes into the engine. Then this part here, this nut, is going to hold this piece on. Uh, this, by the way, is a number uh, 12. Number 12. So remember that number 12, and that's a number six. So you're going to need those. So anyway, uh, I took those three screws out. They were a little bit of a pain. A little WD-40 on them. And, uh, yeah, I had to tap and kind of, you know, anyway, they were tight. Um, and then to get the body off, I basically just took a hammer and tapped here a couple of times and tapped here a couple of times, holding it down, and it fell off. So this is what we're looking at here so far. Exactly what it is, I don't know, except it's gunky. So that's it for now. Okay, after kind of cleaning this thing up a little bit, on the bottom I see... Uh, uh, two little uh, Phillips head screws that we're going to loosen, take out whatever, and see what's going on with this thing. I have absolutely no idea, but we're going to do it. Okay, yesterday I said we was going to take off these two screws up here and take these little plates apart, <clears throat> as you see. However, don't do that, or you will be doing what I had to do, which is right there. So on a trip to the hardware store, and a few words later, it's back together again. So you don't really need you don't really need to take those screws out. Just soak it in something to get the gunk out. Wipe it off, paintbrush or something, and uh, but don't try and take those guys out because they are extremely tight. Okay, I've got this guy here hooked up to a car battery, going to anyway, so you can see the actuation and what it's supposed to do. Try it a little different angle here so you can see how it opens, how much it opens. Let's see. All right, let's just go back over this bit. Now, we did take this off of the bottom of this diverter whatever they want to call it. Uh, I was going to take off the screws when I told then I told you not to. This actually just kind of comes off. It was just kind of crudded up so I didn't see it. You got a gasket right here and then you've got the valve here that opens and closes with electric. I doubt if you're going to be able to see this but inside here you can see a plunger whatever that opens and closes this guy. No, nope, can't see it. So anyway you could probably uh, you know if there's a question about um, this thing working or not you could actually put your finger in there I think <laughs> I think you can put your finger in there while it's on the car we'll say and activate it probably with a battery or something to see that it does move up and down uh, there was some gunk in here that I just kind of scraped out with a screwdriver and whatever and a rag so no big deal uh, I wanted you to see that and let me get my act together here we're gonna put this boy back together again because it did work I hope it's sealed. It seems like when I blow through it and suck on it, I don't get any kind of a, uh, you know, a vacuum leak or anything. So we're going to call it good, and hopefully we'll have this back in in just a bit. So anyway, before you take this guy out, you may want to uh, take a look at it closer if you can, and see if there's any junk in it. And if there's any junk in it, yeah, you're going to have to take something apart. I wanted to get this totally apart, but it appears that it's pressed in and with the luck I had a little earlier with stripping out the screw or um, busting the head off the screw I don't think I'm gonna do it and inside the hole here looked like it was clean from what I could tell so anyway I'm not gonna be able to get this boy apart like I thought uh, anyway just for, uh, for your information just leave it on the car and try putting uh, 24 or 12 volts to it and uh, see if you hear and maybe even feel uh, air going through this thing. Maybe uh, blow through the hose 
if it's hooked up, blow through the hose and then open and close it and see what happens. So that's one way you can probably test it. This thing here was supposed to be one of the root causes of the problem uh, that we were having with the truck, so I just took it out. Okay, well, I was really hoping that it was just the crap that was inside that impeller or fan blade, whatever you want to call it. But apparently the motor is dead. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just make sure my connections on here are uh, correct. Um, whether I got on, um, yeah, whether it's actually hooked up or not, I'm going to go ahead and play with it a bit more. But it looks like that the motor is dead. I've got the two clips going directly to the motor from a 12 volt battery that's underneath my bench here. So it looks like it's gonna be time to order a new one. So until then, later.